Hi, I'm Sandy Genovese and welcome to the Scrapbook Showgram. The scrapbook that we're going to make today, I created a theme that's kind of generic because I didn't, I, I wanted this to be my favorite photo. So instead of being all photos from a vacation or all photos from a birthday, they're kind of spread out. Some are my family, some are my friends, some when they're young, some when they're old, some are heritage. So I haven't even put many of the photos inside, but let me show you what I mean. What I have are windows and it lets you open the window to peek inside and see each photo, but you see them individually. So the fact that um, the photo that's going to go here in here, the fact that they won't match won't make any difference whatsoever. Each of these windows has a, a handy little tab that makes it easy to open. But when you get to the what I have as the final page in this book, I have this fun sort of pop-up element inside that we're going to see how to make as well. Now to begin with, we need to create the inside pages. So what I did is I started with paper and in this case my paper is 6 inches by 12 inches. And if you have 12 by 12 scrapbook paper, it's just the perfect yield with no waste at all by just cutting the paper in half. The first thing you want to do is to fold the paper exactly in half so that you're left with pages that are six by six. And then the window that I cut out is a four inch window. Now I did leave one side as a hinge, but if you're going to do several pages, it's actually easier to cut a four by four piece of paper and use this to trace around. However, when I trace around this, I need I'm going to lose a little bit by the time I trace around this with my pencil. So I started with a four inch square and then I, on my paper trimmer, I just shaved a little bit off of two of the sides to make it just a skosh under a four inch square. So that then I lay it down and when I have an even one inch border all the way around, you're going to trace around it with the pencil. I've already gone ahead and I've traced this. And then it's time to start cutting out this window. Now remember, in fact, I'm going to put an X here. This is going to be the edge that's going to get folded. So this is the one that I'm not going to cut. And I bring up a paper trimmer and I want, first of all, to cut one of those pages. So let me show you if you have one of these trimmers. Here's my pencil line. When the pencil line is aligned with this wire and I'm going to slide this until I don't know how easily you might be able to see I'm gonna let me do it down here and this way maybe I can tilt it a little bit for you to see it I'm sliding it around so that you can see you just want the pencil line to be aligned with this wire that they have on the trimmer. It's so handy. Then what I'm going to do is bring this and I have my, my intersecting line at one inch is right, it's a one inch wide here, is right here. So even I'm going to come in so that this is lined up about with that and I just push down and then cut and I can lift this up and see, okay, I haven't quite gone to the edge, so I'm going to go a little bit longer there. That's good. I can see I didn't quite go far enough at this edge either. So if you don't move the paper, you can, you know, keep lifting it to see just how close you are. Now, in a perfect world, I would turn this and trim the other two edges the same way. However, stupid me, I didn't get quite a big enough trimmer. If you're going to get one of these, it's really handy to get it big enough so that you can slide a 12 inch piece of paper in. So if you don't have that, either if it isn't large enough, the one that you have, or if you don't have one at all, you can always resort to the old scissors. So let me go ahead then and cut the other two edges just with my scissors. Now remember I put a little X just as a reminder so I would be sure not to trim out this edge. This is going to be scored instead of cut. So I'll lay down my ruler and I'll just use my, my scoring tool, in this case a bone folder, to score that edge and then go ahead and fold it back and it gives you the window. Now, the pencil lines at this point 
it's much easier to erase them now all the way around than to wait until the book is put together. So once you've done that, then you're going to, uh, what I did is I decorated each of these windows. Um, and let me bring this up and show you what I mean. Here is one where I've already gone ahead and done the same thing. I've cut the window out. Here is the paper. Now I could have trimmed it to a four inch square. However, as you're cutting each of these windows, in case they're not exact, I like to just cut two or three of the dimensions, give myself some wiggle room. So this is a little bit bigger than I need on one edge. And that way, when I go ahead, I'll put adhesive. You would, could put more adhesive than this. And I'm going to turn it over and place it down. However, I want, before I, well, I'm gonna go ahead. I'll go ahead and place this down. I'll show you what I mean. I was. Remember, I need to put that little red tab in there, but because I've used removable adhesive and I'm not going to push down hard yet, I'm going to go ahead and trim off the excess that I left so that in case I needed to kind of move around a little bit to get all my edges covered. But see, now I still, I've left this loose enough that I can go back now and I can put inside that red tab. And the red tab is just simply red paper that I've punched with a circle punch. It could be any, it doesn't even have to be a circle, it could be a square. This one, this um, the size of this punch happens to be an inch and a fourth. And I'll go ahead and I'll put adhesive on the back of just half of this and I'm going to position this so that about half of it is exposed and then I didn't put remember I didn't put a whole lot of adhesive there you would go back and add as much more adhesive as you want so that you have nice good coverage for this window you're going to do this on all the pages and I decided that I wanted my pages to um, alternate in color so if this is the first page, let me show you how you're then going to attach what would be, if this is the second page, what I'm gonna do is place this one right over the top so that the front of page one is going to be covering the back of page two. And I'm going to go ahead and attach it like so. Let me put some adhesive around these edges. Now, remember I always say this, in order to not waste too much time, I just put enough adhesive to hold it long enough for me to show you how to put everything together. But you're gonna to wanna to put, of course, more adhesive than that. So you go ahead and attach that. Then you'll take the next one, and I'm alternating colors, so if this is page three, now I'm gonna put adhesive behind this one until I attach the second page to what will be the back of the third page. Each time I'm lining up the end of the previous page with the fold line. So it really is easy to put all these together. Now I'll just go ahead and I'll put a few more pages in. you'll notice that I've alternated colors and in order for it um, to finish like a real book would, you do need to have an odd number of pages. So my original book that I showed you had seven pages. This example actually has five. Notice though, when you get to the last page, you open this window and you need something, you need a backing there. So you do need to cut one additional piece that is if you did all the pages the same color, it wouldn't matter, but if you alternate it as I did, you need for this to be what would be the contrasting color that's gonna show through. So I'll go ahead and I'll put adhesive behind the four edges so that I can attach this backing to the final page 
so that now when you open this you still have um, something that you can attach your photo to. Now, at this point you want to accordion fold it. So because this is my going to be my first page, all you have to do to create the cover, I'll try to pull this over so maybe you can see it easier, is go ahead and reverse fold that first fold that you started with. This then is going to be my cover. So I'm going to fold this one this direction. Some of these folds are the same direction that they were folded. Some of them are actually being reverse folded. But you're just accordion folding the book into as many pages as you want. So that now when I hold it up, I have a front cover and then I have all the pages inside. Now at this point, the pages are st still kind of loose and accordion folded. I wanted it more like a book. So what I decided to do was to create a spine. To do that, I'll bring up the paper that I used and I started with a, a pattern paper and the dimensions are four and a half by six. And what I've done is I've gone back and I've put a score. I've come in two inches and scored it from one end and two inches from the other end and scored it. What that gives me is it results in a spine that's a half inch. I'm going to go ahead and fold on my score lines, but I want to point out that how wide your spine is going to be is going to be based on how many pages you want to put in the book and how thick your paper is. So for seven pages, I decided that a half inch was a good dimension for me to work with. Now my example that I've shown you, I actually stopped at five pages just so it wouldn't take so much time, but you can see this is how this is going to go together. So all I need to do is place adhesive. First, I want to support the spine. On a handmade album, I found that the weakest part is the spine. So I've taken some nice heavy chipboard and I've cut it just a skosh less than the half inch binding for the spine. And that's going to really reinforce and not make that want to collapse. Then I'm going to go ahead and place adhesive. Once again, you would do more adhesive than this. And I'm going to go ahead and wrap this around, line up so that the front, the edges line up with the bottom and with the top so that you have the spine for the front and the back of the book. And then as a decoration, I went back and I've added a piece of checked paper that I created this simply by starting with a pink paper and then adding these little red stripes or checks over the top. If I do my tweezers, I can um, get my hands out of the way so that you can see a little bit better what I'm doing here. I'm just tucking this right against the edge, which is easy to make sure that it comes out straight. and then. This large flower is just wrapping paper that I found at the paper source. And that store, you know, it's a nice big sheet and there's tons of these big flower designs on the wrapping paper and I really liked, you know, the design of them. So I just went back and cut them out and went ahead and attached that to create the cover. You can see how to create the pages. But remember that final page, it actually, attached. <laughs> I should have made this one go this way, but let me show you. The, your final page, if you want to do the same thing that I did in my book, let me bring this up and I'll show you. Remember how this page, instead of the spine, the folded edge being on the side, the folded edge is at the top, which is what allows you to make this happen. So when you put your pages together, be sure that you do that last page differently, which unfortunately I didn't think about doing as I was putting this together. So I'm going to just turn this so that you can see how you would put this together and you'll have to pretend like this is facing the correct way. You're going to start with a piece of paper. And in my case, it's the same pattern paper that I used to cover the windows in each of the individual pages. And the dimensions of this is three and a half wide by seven inches long. And you want to start by just folding it in half and then you're going to fold in half again. So I'm accordion fold back and I'll flip it over and accordion fold back. 
so that you end up with one large accordion pleat. Now to get that window where you can see inside, I've just decided that I'll use a square punch and I'm going to see if I can get it sort of somewhat lined up so that it's about, you can pretty much, I mean if you want to measure you can, I don't usually, but that's just my preference. When it, you feel like you have an even amount on both edges, um, then go ahead and punch that out and this will give you a really handy um, window. Now it's also easy to cut that with a square, I mean with a pair of scissors if you want as well. So at this point now we need to dangle the heart that goes inside. For that to happen I'm using two matching stickers and because they're heart stickers they're symmetrical. It is important that if you're going to use a sticker that it be symmetrical. I mean either that it be symmetrical or that it be a mirror image. So I'm going to place some thread so that it sits right on the sticky side and comes out the top of the heart. And if I can get my fingers out of the way, I'm then going to take a matching heart sticker and I'm going to just sandwich that thread right in the middle and I'll go ahead, position that right on top. You can do it with die cuts and then you just put adhesive in between the two layers. So this is how you get this nice hanging heart. At this point, in order to attach it into the window, what you want to do is just take, decide exactly how, how much you want it to dangle, how far. I think I want it, I'm going to pull this inside and I'll just take a piece of tape. I like to start by leaving the thread extra long so that I can move it if I want to. I can pull it tighter or loosen it. So I'm going to start by placing my tape right over the thread. It's white on white, so I don't know how easily you can see. But then I'm going to bring this around and look at what I have here and see if, as that dangles. Gee, do I want that to hang down more or do I want it less? At this point, because I haven't pushed hard on the tape, I can still slide this a little bit either way. I can pull it down, I can pull it back up. At Whenever you have it positioned how you want it, then you're going to put your well, first of all, let me find my scissors and I'll trim off. You don't want it to, the thread to show outside. So I'm going to go ahead and trim off the excess. And now I'll go ahead and I'll put adhesive. And I'm going to put adhesive on, pull this up, on one of the sides. And I'll go ahead, you know what? I'm going to put the adhesive on, on what will be one of the edges. I'm folding it up so that the adhesive is exposed and I'm going to position this. I can see that I want this to sit pretty much in this position. So I'll go ahead and close this up and it's going to just give me adhesive to one side. Now I'm going to take and place adhesive on this flip side. And when I close this up and press, it will now fasten it into there. So you can see how you create this element. However, you want to make sure that when you do it, that you create it so that the final page has the fold at the top and it allows this element to open correctly like so. Now, this particular book I mentioned that I was creating so that I could put together a whole series of my favorite photos, but I wanted to show you how easy it is to change the theme. This book is made exactly the same way, it's just that this is themed for birthday. And the dimensions are different, so if you'll look, you know, but all the pages are done exactly the same. However, I don't have that, you know, my final page doesn't have that interactive element that pops up. And instead of turning it into a book with a spine, this one um, I've left in an accordion style so that it can sit on display like this. Another example, here is one that I created um, showing how fun it was when kids are learning their colors and their shapes. And each of the windows, this one opens just the way that the one that we made. It's the same size, dimensions, everything. But when I go to the next page, this is, the first page was a square. Here they're learning a circle, a triangle, and then here are rectangles that open, you know, kind of like a, a different kind of window. Here's even a trapezoid. E, each of the page 
window openings, they're all different shapes in order to help the kids learning those geometric shapes. And then in my final example, on the showgram quite some time ago, I did this a similar style, but this one was themed for the zoo. So all of the pages, the windows are actually covered in a zebra paper and all of the photos inside. In this case, all of my pages are red, so I didn't worry about showing a border around the photo because the background was just the same, it was the same red. So my photos actually are the full size of the window. And I even have the journaling in the final window. You know, it's a fun element of surprise that comes from hiding each of the photos or the journaling behind a window that you have to open in order to enjoy the photo inside.